This scalping strategy is actually one that I used when I was broking for clients who wanted to work large orders throughout the day and I was tasked to get a good price for them in comparison to the rest of the market. So I'm gonna take this strategy and then put it over to trading crypto on our own PL, taking risk, trying to go long and short in different areas and really taking advantage of the short-term price movements and other people's orders. Um, so there's some benefits to this. Mainly the one is um, that we don't really care too much about the longer term trends, which is trading momentum intraday. There's some downsides as well, for sure. This is very difficult to do as a trading strategy. And, um, you know, you're going to win some and lose some. But the most important thing is to put your risk mitigation in place so that when you lose, it's small. And when you win, you take those profits. First thing we're gonna do is we need a uh, trading system. I'm gonna use Bybit for this one, mainly because their fees are extremely low. And when you're scalping and trading often, you, you need very low fees. Bybit restrict their platform to some countries that um, you know the regulation is very different. So if you can't access Bybit, some people use a VPN. I can't recommend that obviously, but you know Binance and FTX are pretty good as well. Uh, for FTX, you can get 5% as a fee discount if you use a referral link, I'll leave that below. Also with Bybit, you can get up to $4,000 as a deposit bonus on Bybit. It's the best deposit bonus around, so definitely check that out. I'll leave that link in the description as well. We're gonna get right into it though. So I'm in my derivatives account here. I put some money in there. I'm gonna go over to Bitcoin USDT. I would suggest using uh, Bitcoin really only, maybe Ethereum as well because it's very liquid. The other um, coins are just not suitable for this. You need a very large liquid uh, trading pair. So for me, Bitcoin, US dollar really, really is the one. Um, so what we're going to do is really set up the Bybit trading system with all of the metrics that we need. You can definitely complicate things a lot when using metrics, but I like to keep things very simple and just use the basics of what I need. And the other stuff comes maybe if you want to do a lot more research, you know, outside of when you actually trade. We're gonna go onto the five minute chart right here. This is a five minute scalping strategy that takes away all of the longer term trends um, and really gives us an intraday kind of move. We're gonna to come to indicators and we're gonna search for EMA. So that's the exponential moving average. Click it twice because um, we're, we're gonna to want to put two on there. Um, and then we're gonna change these. So we're gonna to go to the settings and we're gonna put a 50 period moving average and uh, obviously just change the style as you want, 50 right there. And then uh, on this one, we're gonna put a 100 period. The reason I'm doing this is because what that does is essentially the 50 period moving average is a plot of the 50 previous time zones. So for the five minute chart, that's five minutes, 50 times, and plots a line, as you can see here, um, which is obviously of those 50 times and it's exponential. So it gives more weight to the more recent price, mo price movements as compared to previous price movements. Obviously the 100 is a 100 period. So what this is giving us very simply is the short term price movement versus the longer term price movement. When the lines cross over and you can't really see them here, I'll change them in a second. But when these lines cross over, that gives us a signal. And that trading signal is something we use to then go ahead and trade. After putting the EMAs on, you're gonna to need to put the MACD on. The MACD or the Moving Average Convergence Divergence as it's known, is a momentum oscillator. What that means very simply is that it tells us where the momentum is and when it's changing. That's really important for us because what we're essentially doing with a scalping strategy is trading the momentum of trades. We don't care about the fundamentals or anything else. We are just looking to basically ride a move in momentum. So that's what we need here. You can see the MACD right here. You can come and change this as well. So uh, what I would say is you actually don't need the MACD in signal lines. You can just use a histogram, but um, we're gonna keep it all on there just to kind of show you. Again, what you can do is just change this to make sure that you can see it properly. Um, but the MACD, and I'll change this in a second, the MACD is just simply telling us at which point is the momentum changing up and down. And you can use this both long and short as well. And it gives us essentially a guide to say, okay, um, the momentum is changing and you can ride this momentum up and trade it. And that's what we're gonna trade on. What I'm also gonna do is change the MACD input settings as well, because what we want the MACD to do is give us an even shorter time frame than the chart. So come to the settings, go to inputs, and basically halve this. So the fast length go to six, and the slow length, you can go to 13. Uh, signal length, also change this. You can change this to four, four and a half, it's all right. So that gives us a different set of data. 
Uh, what we're also going to do with this style, you can actually just take these off. You don't you don't really need these lines. You can just uh, have a look at the uh, the histogram, and this is going to tell you. So the MACD is telling us where the very very short term momentum is changing. And that's going to be the signal that we use to then go and trade on the chart, which is essentially giving us the five minute price and also these um, moving averages that also confirm some signals for us. So this is the setup that with the MACD and the EMAs. Now, when it comes to trading signals, I'm going to try and keep this simple as well. There's actually a few different ones and you can use them uh, depending on where the chart is. Essentially, what we're looking for is what's known as a, a crossover. That can be a bullish crossover, which is to the upside, or a bearish crossover to the downside. You can go long and short here. Obviously, I'm trading futures. You cannot do this in the spot market. You need to trade futures. They're more liquid. They're cheaper to trade. And of, of course, you can go short with them. So what I mean by a bullish crossover is this can happen in a few different ways. The first way is if we look at the, uh, the EMA. So we can look at the 50 EMA, uh, which is in yellow, and then that crosses through, uh, through the 50 EMA. And that is the 100, right? the, the 100 EMA, sorry, which is blue, right? So when the yellow crosses the blue to the upside, that is a short-term bullish crossover. What it's telling me is that the short-term price movement is moving up through the longer-term price movement. So shorter term, we're getting a bump up in prices. People are buying, right? People are bidding up. When that happens, we can use that signal to say, let's go in and ride your order. There's obviously more buyers in the market. They're going to have to pay up. Let's ride on their coattails and trade this. So that's the first thing. The other thing is essentially when the price chart, so you can see the candles here, basically come back down to either the 50 or 100 period uh, EMA. If the 50 is above the blue, so the, you know, the 50 is above the 100, then what we can see is when the price chart moves down to the 50, uh, as long as the 50 is above the 100, we would expect this to bounce uh, also to the upside. The reason being is that buyers have come in, they stopped a little bit, and then it looks like we could possibly be moving back up to the upside. This is a bounce during a bullish, uh, you know, like a bullish move. So this doesn't work every time, which is why you put your stop loss in place and basically trade this. Another tip that I would have is always try and trade the move when the first crossover happens. So when the yellow crosses the blue for the first time, you can see it actually got rejected here, it kind of moved through and got rejected here. So if you went in here, you actually would have lost. Um, but you set your stop loss and you move on. And then what we can see here is that the second time it moves through, it actually confirms this, moves up, and then you can come in here. And essentially you would have ridden that you know, very, very well. If you're trading sh super short term, you actually could have possibly traded this pullback to the line as well and traded that and that would have been a very good move. You wouldn't have actually made this money because with this strategy, you actually cut your profits as well. You can change that if you want, but for me, having a specific strategy of stop loss and take profit is the best way. Um, but that, that's how we would use that kind of bullish crossover. The second thing is look at the MACD. So we know what bullish crossover is when the price, when the short term price movement is moving up through, or if the short term price, the short term EMA is above when the price comes down to it and we're looking for that bounce off. So that's the two kind of bullish signals that we're getting. Reverse that for a short trade, right? So if the 50 period is under the 100 period, so yellow is below blue, we would consider this to be short term uh, kind of uh, bearish price movement, right? So what you're saying is short term, um, the price is under the 100 period, so short term sellers are winning. So we only kind of go short and bearish in that respect and then sell any rallies into that resistance and sell them short and then buy back lower. Sell first, buy back lower. That's a short trade. What I would suggest if you're a beginner, just go long only and that makes things simpler. The second thing we need to do is look at this MACD. This is a signal for us. What we want to essentially see here is a change in momentum. So when you see this right here, so remember we get a good signal of momentum change. What you can see right here on the MACD is that momentum isn't doing much. So if I look at this and say momentum isn't changing a lot, I would suggest that the price isn't changing a lot either. And that's uh, borne out here, you can see this consolidation. So when you have a consolidation of prices, the price is the same, right? There's no momentum in the price whatsoever. It's not changing. So what we want to see is um, essentially a signal that tells us that momentum is actually starting to change. So you can see there's a sell off right here and then we see momentum change. So this bar chart comes down, a sell off into support 
and then we see the first kind of change into uh, you know a momentum change from down to up. So this is telling me that momentum has changed, right? So the me the momentum was down, and then the momentum is up. We want to trade that momentum. So we want to ride on the coattails of this change in momentum right here. You can see that we would have kind of gone long at this level, ridden that momentum up. So this MACD doesn't tell us the price, it just tells us where the momentum is and we change that momentum. So what you wanna do is see where momentum is changing and then see when it changes. So this, uh, this trade right here, I actually wouldn't have gone in and then when the momentum changes to the upside, this is when you try and get in and ride a move. Again, we wanna see kind of a change in momentum here. So from the downside, change in momentum, ride that through. Uh, right here as well, again, if you're only going long, which I would suggest because um, the yellow is above the blue, then we wait for the momentum to change again. You can see momentum's down here, kind of consolidating, consolidating when the momentum tries to change. That's when we want to get in and place a trade. Again, momentum here, kind of to the downside, you know, we wouldn't get in, want to place a trade right here. What you can see, you know, maybe that wouldn't have worked out. We may have been able to get away with it there, um, but that doesn't work out every time. So they're the momentum changes. I'll show you how to put those on the chart right now. When you put a trade in on Bybit or any of the other trading systems, it's all gonna be the same. So you put a market or a limit order in, make sure you set your stop loss when you enter and your take profit. What I can see here on the chart is a perfect change in momentum. Um, so we have a little bit of a, of a sell off and you can see the momentum starting to change down on the MACD. Um, so you can see that right here. Essentially we have a sell off and then three bars are printing. You can see it's just starting to change and the momentum is starting to tick up. So after these couple of bars, and I'm not gonna get into um, candlesticks here, but essentially this is kind of a, a nice candlestick to get in on as well. So this is where you'd want to place your trade, 36818. Um, so that's where you would have got in around here. You can actually just um, enter that. So you can, I can click that, you can see I click that at um, plus, and I can enter a limit buy in here. What I'm gonna do is just show you um, how to do that up here as well. So the order price, you can see it would have been at 36,846. So you put that in and the quantity, um, so whatever you want to trade with, right? So you can put 10% in or something like that of your, you know, your, um, your order value. Um, and what we want to be doing here is going along with, you know, 2x leverage. Now to make this work, you need to be using leverage. If you use zero leverage, it's going to be very difficult to make it work if you have a small account. Um, and if you want to make this work, you're going to need at least two or three times leverage. If you, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend leverage. Just try it out with 1x leverage, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it really is for kind of more advanced traders using leverage. So just to make sure, you know, please don't, uh, you know, ruin your account with, with all of this. So what we wanna do now is find where the, the stop loss is. We've got our entry, and we obviously wanna do this really quickly. So you put the price in and the amount you wanna trade. And then what we need to do is buy along with TPSL, click this on. You don't have to put the take profit in right away, but I would definitely put the stop loss in. So the way I do things for this strategy is to have a potential max loss of 0.3% uh, and a potential max gain of 0.5%. So it's not quite two to one, but obviously if you have a potential loss of 0.5 and a win of 0.5, it's like a 50-50 trade that if it goes down or up, you're not, you know, you haven't got a good risk reward. So 0.3 loss and um, 0.5 win. The way you very quickly work out your stop loss is just by taking a percentage of your entry price and putting that in straight away when you trade. So we wanna find what uh, basically 0.3 of this is. So we enter uh, 36846, 36846 times 0.997. That gives us 36735, 36735. So that's our stop loss. You can see that our entry price is 36846 and our stop loss 36735, just slightly below. That's our loss if we go in. You can obviously times this by how much Bitcoin or how large your position is. But what you do, come down and click open long. That will come into your open orders down here. You can see all of the parameters. You do not have a take profit yet. I would suggest doing that second because you want to get the trade done. What I would suggest is doing a market order if you really want to get it done quick, or if you think that you can trade around, do a limit order because it's cheaper, you're going to pay uh, lower fees, um, and you can get that in here. Uh, so you can obviously put that on the chart like I showed you with the plus and see where your entry price is.
Once you've entered your order, you can then put your take profit in because you don't have to be as quick. The way that you do that is obviously work out what um, uh, half a percent is of 3684. So 368846 times 1.005, uh, 37030. So you can put your take profit in. Once your order is open right here, you'll see TPSL. It will say um, open limit sale, basically. You can click on that and then put the amount in and that will be your take profit and stop loss. So once your trade is in, you now have your entry price and you have your risk mitigation and take profit and you just let it ride. When I was a broker, we would actually use this strategy not to try and go long orders, but essentially sell into strength. Um, if you're a seller and if you're a buyer, just wait for things to move down and, and kind of buy back for the client. But obviously, if you're trading on risk yourself, then we're using this momentum to trade into. Something that is really great that I think is the best site that I pretty much found online is this winrate.io. Um, so if you type in, um, you know, profits calculator, crypto profits calculator, essentially this is the site that comes in Google first. So what you can see if you have $1,000 here, the win rate is, is not, you know, it's not going to be too much, right? You are just going to not win every single one. So let's put a 60% win rate in there. Uh, and then the take profit is 0.5, like I said, and the stop loss is 0.3. So if you just have this risk mitigation in place, you can see the number of trades. So something like I said before is that um, basically it is better to trade around when the crossover happens. So this doesn't happen all the time, but if you see the yellow moving through the blue, that is a good sign of momentum changing. That's really a very, very strong indicator. MACD shows you this, but this actual price moving through is a very, very strong indicator. So, you know, trade more around when this happens and less when the move is done. What you can see, this is a great example. Essentially, when the, when the move happens first, it is the most violent because obviously something big is happening. But then as time goes on, what you'll see is that they kind of converge a little bit. So that move has happened. What that tells me, because we're trading on the five minute, is that essentially a buyer or a couple of buyers came in and had orders to fill. They went, yep, I'm going to push this price up. I need to get the order done. And then you can see what's happening here is that those, those orders are fading out and the buyers have kind of disappeared. Um, so their orders are done and you can see the price consolidating, getting a lot smaller in the movements um, and, you know, kind of, kind of falling off a little bit. And you can see that the 50 eventually passes through. So this, if you can think about someone that got a big order from a client, what happened is they went okay we're on okay so you see the massive difference in price movement in momentum we're on here buy 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 um they come off a little bit they buy a bit more they get the order filled and done and then eventually they kind of starting to kind of trickle the order in and they're kind of finished they don't really care anymore and that order is finished and then that it comes off and then another order in uh, and then a kind of another you know buy this could have been them saying we need to get the order finished and they could have just said, all right, market, buy up, and then it comes off again. That is how I read the market because every single order is an, an, you know, a person doing something. So when we come to this, what I would suggest is you know, making sure when the move happens, uh, that is when you kind of get alive. And then when it's um, kind of petering out, you don't have to trade as often. So maybe five times a day, something like this, uh, you know, 100 and, 120 times a month or something like this, 150 times a month. Leverage, you can go two or three X. Um, now, the exchange does matter because each exchange charges you different fees and Bybit, I, I think, are the cheapest for futures. So if you run this strategy, you can see, um, you know, essentially with a win rate of 60 and 150 trades, you can see this here, uh, fees paid, right? It's very big. Lastly, I just want to say that trading on leverage is extremely risky and so is day trading. I don't think that it is a long-term strategy to earn wealth. It is extremely unreliable as an income source. And I personally don't trade, day trade hardly ever, long-term investor. Um, and also, you know, being a broker, I know that it takes eight to 10 hours a day to sit there trading all day as a job. And it is not very enjoyable. The way I do things and I run these as well is actually using trading bots on something like Pionex. Um, you can use trading bots on KuCoin as well. They basically do the day trading work for you. You can set these up, for example, in a leverage grid 
Um, and I've actually got a video on this, so I'm not going to go through this. But essentially, this trading bot sits there all day, day trading momentum for you. You can input it, put some money in and let the bot do its work. There's still a ton of risk here, of course, when price fluctuations happen, you can make or lose money. I've got a video on trading bots in the description. I suggest watching it if you actually want to put some money into trading anyway, and you're going to do that. Maybe you want to have a look at trading bots to take a lot of the stress, anxiety out of the equation for you and just let them ride as part of your day trading strategy. I'll leave the link to Pinex in the description and the video as well going through it. Also, if you want to have a look at my trading course and investor course, really is a long-term strategy about putting a portfolio together um, where you can have some trading and some investment as well. I'm really thinking about having a long-term portfolio strategy as well. All of that is in the description for you. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.